Hey there, Bowling Green. I'm Ryan Valland, and this is your weekly Falcon Sports Report. Let's get it started with men's basketball. On Tuesday, the Falcon men's basketball team was able to overcome a 15-point deficit versus Central Michigan to remain in first place in the MAC East Division. Coming into the matchup, the Falcons had won 12 of their last 14 games, but fell behind early midway through the second half. BG went on to take a 15-4 run, and that was able to give them the lead. Team defense and converting 19 of 20 second second half free throws sealed the biggest comeback win of the season for the Falcons. Dylan Fry led the way, scoring 23 points with four three pointers, while Justin Turner scored 20 points, shooting an efficient six for 12 from the field, and while Dimaggio Wiggins added 17 points and 11 rebounds. Now here is head coach Michael Huger after the game. A uh, very good game, um, both teams part, hard fought game. Uh, Central came out and, and they came here for one thing and that was a victory. And uh, first half they did an excellent job. Second half we were able to uh, regain our composure and understanding of the defense and uh, we were able to get stops and get out of transition and that was the difference in the game. BG wins the game with the final score of 79 to 72. The Falcons improved to 17 and seven with a nine and two record in the MAC. 17 overall wins marks the most for the Falcons under head coach Michael Huger. While 9-2 and two is the first time they have done so in MAC play since 1982-1983. But before Tuesday night's win, this past Saturday the Falcons took on Toledo in the Stroh for the Battle of I-75. It was a showdown of the MAC elite as its divisional leaders met for the first time this season. BG came in trying to remain undefeated at the Stro. In the first half, the Falcons shot 50% from the field, but they trailed 35 to 33 at halftime. In the second half, BG hung on tight, regaining the lead twice. Dylan Fry led the way for the Falcons with 17 points, connecting on three three-pointers, but it wasn't enough as Toledo was able to battle back late in the game and win this one 78 to 71. We weren't tough during the end when we needed to be mentally tough and physically tough enough. Uh, Sanford got an offensive rebound put back when we got a stop. Um, you know, we missed, played, uh, we left them wide open in transition one time. And uh, those are the things, that's, that's the mental part of the game that, that we weren't focused and locked in on the mental part. And uh, that affected us as the game went on, and especially the last four minutes. We are normally locked in and focused and ready to go. And, um, we, we, we weren't able to execute what we normally do at the end. And, you know, I don't know exactly what it was, the rivalry, if the game was too big or any of that stuff. So uh, we've been in big games before. It's always special against Toledo. So uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to be a part of. The crowd was great. The students uh, would love to thank them for coming out and supporting us the way they did today. Um, you know, when you can get another two consecutive sellouts at home, you know, we're doing something right, but uh, definitely uh, they did a much better job than we did, and that's why they won. Looking ahead, BG travels to DeKalb, Illinois, to face off against the 12-13 and 13 Northern Illinois Huskies tomorrow. NIU is currently on a four-game losing streak, and you can watch that game tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. on ESPN3. Following that, the Falcons return home to the Stroh Center on Tuesday at 7 p.m. against the 14 and 10 Akron Zips. That game is available on ESPN+. As always, these games will be broadcast on the Falcon Radio Network. On to women's basketball. Last night, the women's basketball team won their first conference game of the season with a win over the Buffalo Bulls. The Falcons never trailed in the game and were able to dominate an 8-2 team in MAC play that advanced to the Sweet 16 last season in the NCAA tournament. BG led by as many as 20 points, but Buffalo cut it to one in the final minutes. Head coach Robin Fralick's squad managed to hold on and earn their first MAC win under the new coach. Andrea Cecil had 26 points and 10 of 15 shooting, and Sidney Lambert had 13 points. 
Sophomore Madison Parker scored 12 points, making all nine of her free throws, while Katie Hempfling had a solid all-around game with 11 points, nine rebounds, five assists, and five steals. Great team win tonight. Um, I just told the team in the locker room afterward, I'm just so proud of them. Um, you know, we've been through a lot of ups and downs, and we've been close so many nights, and they keep showing up, and they keep fighting. And tonight we were able to finish the game, and it was an incredible team effort. I thought we made a lot more hustle plays, um, and we stayed more consistent for 40 minutes. Next stop for the women's team is tomorrow in Kent State as they take on the Golden Flashes at 5 p.m. on ESPN+. Well, we go from the basketball court to the baseball diamond. BG Baseball kicks off their 2019 campaign against the Middle Tennessee State University Blue Raiders and Murfreesboro, Tennessee this weekend. The Falcons will look to improve on a historically bad 2018, a year in which they, had, they went 11-39. The Falcons lost a good chunk of their lineup to graduation, but one player who will be back this year is starting pitcher Chase Antle. Sports reporter Leo Goldman sat down with Chase recently to discuss coming back from his nearly career-ending injury. Take us through the time that you knew something was wrong and how you decided on having the surgery. I felt a pop in that fall and it kind of just kind of put, tried to keep pushing through it. And unfortunately, I was, I, unfortunately enough, I was able to keep going throughout the season and at the end of the year kind of gave out and then that led me to that surgery. To see the full interview, go to our YouTube page, BG24. Now we go into the chilly ice rink. BG Falcon Hockey returns from their bye week this weekend to take on the Alaska Fairbanks Nanooks on home ice in front of the Slater Family Ice Arena crowd. The Falcons looking to find their footing to close out the regular season, sit at 16 in the latest USCHO poll and are tied for, this, are tied for second place in the WCHA conference standings. Bowling Green is also at 15th in the pairwise rankings and it's becoming clearer by the day they will need to win the WCHA conference in order to qualify for the NCAA tournament. BG is looking to avenge a split series with the Nanooks earlier this season. They would fall in the opening game of the series in Alaska by a score of 4-1. to one. Head coach Chris Bergeron spoke on the team's status going into the weekend Wednesday morning. What I find in this time of the year uh, the game seemed to, in the, in the kids' minds, this, the game seemed to mean more because you're getting down to late in the year and, and, and nothing's guaranteed and all those kind of things. So I think those two areas just ratchet up the intensity just a little bit. Um, I mean, they're, they're fighting for a playoff spot. We're fighting for home ice, uh, second place. All the, so we're both fighting for something, and, and uh, I think this team is really dangerous. So uh, we, we're trying to get prepared um, to, to play our best hockey. I know they're doing the same thing. And the fact that we, we played two heated games up in Fairbanks, it would uh, you know that that's a recipe as far as I'm concerned for two more pretty uh, tight checking, hard fought games here. You can catch more of that press conference and a breakdown of the matchup that can be found on bgfalconmedia.com as well as on Twitter at bg24. And here is a look around BG Athletics this week. As you can see on your screen, Bowling Green Hockey takes on Alaska Fairbanks tonight at the Slater Family Ice Arena. Baseball starts their season with a meeting against Middle Tennessee State. Boston University comes to play Bowling Green softball today in their first uh, meeting of the season. On to women's basketball. They'll be home to take on Kent State. Excuse me, they'll be in Kent State to take on the Kent State Golden Flashes. And men's basketball takes on Northern Illinois after the win against Central Michigan. And then tennis will be in Pittsburgh to take on Pittsburgh. And with so many great plays in Falcon Athletics lately, can any new play overtake last week's top play? And of, and of course, our top play from last week's show, Michael Lasseter made the steal on the fast break and the alley-oop off the backboard to Antoine Lillard. It's going to take a lot to overtake this play. Let's look at the challengers for this week. Our first play, Katie Hempfling with the feed to Maddie Cole for the tough in one underneath the rim. The second play, the Falcons in transition. Justin Turner gives it to Daquan Plowden, who throws the hammer down. Let's look at this play. Plowden. Just look at that. Plowden, the hammer down. 
And the last play that will go to Daquan Plowden again with the chase down block. Darrington. Look at this. Plowden, boom, off the rim and out. Of course, you can vote for which play you thought was best on Twitter at BG24. If you think one of the three new plays this week is the best, or if you think last week's is still the champion, let us know. And for all those wanting to play intramural sports, this spring, this coming Monday the 18th, is the last day to register your team for Ultimate Frisbee, 4-4 four and four flag football and volleyball. For more information as well as how to register, visit www.bgsu.edu slash recwell slash intramural dash sports. And that's all for this week's Falcon Sports Report. For producer Garrett McKinney, director Ken Garland, and everyone here at BG24, thanks for watching. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as Instagram with the, uh, with the handle at BG24 and BGFalconMedia.com. Check in again next week for more highlights, interviews, and stories from your favorite Falcon teams.